Welcome, followers of the channel. This is Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator. Coming back at you. You've seen probably on previous videos, two or three videos back, where I'm painting a radiator with a brush. Now this video is the next, next step on from painting radiators with a brush. And I'm gonna try and keep it simple. I'm gonna try and keep it short and sweet. We like a 20 minute video, not a 40 minute video. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to paint radiators like this using a sprayer. And it's gonna be the HVLP QT5 uh, sprayer that I've got. Now, it's quite simple. We're just spraying it. And we're spraying it with our, um, I'll say our favorite paint, Bedek MSP and it's in the anthracite because we're keeping the theme of the flat because we're on the flat renovation project theme of the flat we're going to do the radiators they're a bit mucky they're a bit dirty I'm going to do them in anthracite for a change saves saves by new ones so the plan is today we're going to get all these sanded down light sand and you're going to say what do you sand it down by well, sorry what do you sand it down what do I sand it down by what do I sand it down with I've got, I've just got myself some hot water because I've boiled a kettle. Still no water in the place. I've got those sanding pads, you know these sponge and they've got um, silicone carbide either side, about a 150 grade. I've got a bucket of water, warm. I want to put my hands in warm water. And I put a little bit of detergent in it. Now if you want to use sugar soap you can do, but I've got a little bit of detergent in and I'm going to clean down these. I'll just briefly, briefly show you. I'm going to sand them down like that, sand them down. Now we're not looking at um, sanding them off, you know, sanding all the paint off. All we're looking at is cleaning them down, make sure they're clean so there's no dirty sediment on or anything like that. And actually just the fineness of that sandpaper to give a key to this previously powder coated surface. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just getting my water. I'm going to soak it in and then rub it. Give it all a nice key, any marks, any dirt on it, I'm going to wipe it all off and then I'm going to um, just dry it down with a microfiber towel, make sure it's all clean. And then the idea is I'll tape up around the radiator for protection and then the HVLP will come out and we're going to spray these radiators. The principle of spraying these is I can alter the fan with that HVLP to try and get in as far as I can on these, you can see. I know, they're not nice, are they? They're a double radiator with the fins. I'm going to try and get in as far as I can with the sprayer. I won't be able to get down at the back. I'm not worried about that. As long as the paint just creeps around, do what I can in there, do across there the best I can, and then spray the fronts. Not complicated. It's not complicated, and we'll see how we go. Now, I don't think there's anything else to tell you on that. Let me crack on with this. Let me get these all taped up because I need to just tape up around the where the valves are. Just a bit of taping a bit of paper, and then get some lining paper. I've got some card and I've got some, um, you know, the Cortex sheet as well, just to help me protect it. I've got four radiators to do. I'm not expecting these to take too long to do. Brilliant. Um, one coat. Two coats will probably be enough, we'll see. If it needs a third, I can give it a third. We'll see how we go. But we're gonna change the color of these from white to anthracite, just like that. Who said, who, somebody said that, didn't they? Just like that, just like that, oh, oh, oh. just like that. Was it Freddie Starr? Did Freddie Starr do that? Oh, just like that. Comments below. Right, see you in a bit, let's get, um, let's get cracking. I'm not gonna say my fingers are really sore because that was fine wet and dry sandpaper. So I've rubbed down all those radiators. Back of the camera, I'll spin you around, I'll show you. And I've taped up around them, as you can see. I've got a piece of cardboard I'm gonna stuff under the bottom edge and I'll move that around with me. Right, so you can see that I've done all that, all the prep's done. Let's talk about the paint. Now I'm gonna be using the HVLP with the remote pot, you know what a remote pot is. It's the big cup. Just move me gun. It's the big pot with a suction tube, as so. 
goes up through the pipe, paint pipe to the gun and it, this allows you to spray in any direction, up, down, left, right. Now you could use the cup pot underneath, you know, the ordinary suction cup underneath the gun which connects to there. But I th I've been thinking that if I've got to go across the top and the sides and I've got awkward bits to try and get into, I might be better with the free flowing gun off, off the remote pot. So that's what I'm going to use. Uh, you're asking me, I'm going to stick with the 1.8 needle set which is that greeny coloured one that'll allow me to open and close for the paint flow for as much as I want and then don't forget your regulator for your airflow is as near to the gun handle as you possibly can and those who don't know your fan patterns adjusted by that one there wide narrow you can virtually get it to a pinpoint spot right but a lot of you keep asking me and I keep saying it's trial and error mixing paint how do I know what paint to mix for the HVLP? HVLP is one of them things you're not going to be neat, you're not going to be using neat paint. So you've got to you've got to thin down your paint with water. Well, if you're using water-based paints. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do, and this is my this is really how I know that it's going to spray nicely. Right, I'm going to spin you down to this. Now, can you see that? There's my paint. It's the Better MSP, this goes over radiators, lovely. Now if you can see this, I'm hoping you can do. This has had a little bit of water in it because this is what I used when I sprayed the Veluxes a few weeks ago. But if you see this, it didn't have much paint tipped back into it. Can you see how that runs into there? Now it folds into it but sits on the surface. Now I know that that will be too thick for spraying with an HVLP and what I'm wanting is when that paint runs off the mixing stick into itself it doesn't sit on the surface like like a thicker cream it it folds into it virtually straight away being thinner and that's what I want it to do so I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do that I'm going to tip some out I'm not going to tip all of it I'll tip probably oh, a third two thirds if that, right, just wipe me mixing stick down. And again, I'm gonna say, it's like telling your grandmother to suck eggs. Mixing sticks, please, not canes. You can't mix paint up with cylindrical objects like a cane. Or I've even seen people just tipping the paint upside down and then back again. That does not get the paint off the inner edge and if it's settled on the bottom, it doesn't mix your paint up properly. Right. Lecture over. Right, I'm just, this is just a, you know, I use the old Optiva 5 paint tubs just to work out of. I'm going to tip some paint out, let's say half, yeah, half of what I had in there. Wipe your paint tin down, always work off the back. You don't need to be going around with a cloth. If you go around with a cloth, you in and out of that paint all day you're gonna get sick of doing that. Right, so here's my paint in there. I've got some water. I'm just gonna add a splash of water to that. Not a lot, I mean, what's that egg cup full? And I'm gonna mix that in. Now, if you've got a mechanical mixer off a drill, don't be mixing it too quickly because you don't want too much air into that paint. You can see, it's mixing nicely. Hopefully you can see it off the camera. Right, let's see what that folds into itself like. That is running virtually straight back into that. I would actually say probably a little bit too thin. Let's have a look. That's not bad actually. That's running straight back into it nicely. That is good to go. That's running nicely. If you've got a viscosity cup, use a viscosity cup. But I'm doing the trial and error and I know that that will now spray through that HVLP and go up that paint pipe nicely because that's the thing if it's too thick it doesn't go up there so I'm going to get that paint decanted now into the pot you see me I'm going to get it now clatter clatter I'm now going to get the paint in there just do a little bit of a test spray 
on the wall behind me and I'm going to start spraying the rags up. So um, see you in a little while. We just fizzled out and blended into this, didn't we? Right, that mix that I did that I thought might be a little bit too thin, it actually wasn't and I've done some test pieces where the kitchen's going to go and I've got the kitchen fitter booked in yeah, in a month's time but never mind. My test piece is there, I could regulate the paint flow, turned it down slightly so I wasn't putting too much paint on so that is actually quite nicely spraying. Now I'm going to show you how you do it on a radiator, it's going to be difficult because you'll have the zzzz and I won't be able to talk to you. So I think I'll, I'll talk it through on a dry run to explain what we're going to do. Right. First things first. The beauty, the beauty with HVLP is, if I use the word triggering, I don't want to press it because I've just had it running. I don't want... Spits paint out. Right. If you pull that trigger back part way, it'll start blowing air out the air cap. If you pull it all the way back, that's when your paint starts coming up the pipe, atomizing at the front where these, I'm gonna call them ram's horns, bull horns, whatever you wanna call them. These things here, they've got the holes in. That lets the air out. The paint comes through that middle orifice of the needle. That's where you get your different sizes of needle. The bigger the number, the bigger the orifice, the bigger the needle. Right, you know all that. I've spoke about that on videos before. Right, so the paint comes out, atomizers, and away you go. Now, if you only pull it part way back and just let the air out, that'll clean the back of your radiators. Because there's no way I could have cleaned all the dust that's at the back of that radiator. So, before you start, before you start spraying, use the, the air of your HVLP, just to blow anything out. And if you've seen that, the short, yeah, there was a pair of ladies frilly knickers at the back of that radiator. We've got rid of, they've gone in the bin now, don't worry. So, right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go across the top. I've dialed it down so I'm not putting too much paint on. It'll look a little bit, I don't wanna say splattered, it's not splattered, it looks more mottled when I'll do it because I'm not putting loads of paint on because I want to control how much paint to put on. Now this is the first coat. I'm gonna go across the top, carefully trying to get as much as I possibly can. And where those fins are in between, because it's a double radiator, I'm gonna go on an angle one way and then turn around and then go back on the other angle to try and catch as many of those as I possibly can. I'm not gonna get it all the way down. I'm not, not a miracle worker. You can't, you can't get paint all the way down where you can't get it. But I'm gonna go around the back, the middle, the sides with not having too much paint being applied so I can work it. If you see me going instead of straightforward shh flow, that's because I'm trying to get little areas and because I am using the HVLP, I can do that. I've got more control. I'm not on full flow of air, so I've regulated the air down. I've not, I'm not wanting to get paint blasted onto it that get bounced back and overspray. And with HVLP, the biggest gripe you have is it's a turbine and the machine's going and it's actually circulating the dust in the air. And if you get a little bit of overspray, the turbine does blow it all the way around. I've only got four radiators. I'm not going to think I'm going to be getting loads of overspray with it, but I'm controlling it because I'm controlling it by the airflow. Have it on full blast and you'll see it. Just turn it down until you can get a nice spray fan pattern with it atomizing nicely that you're happy with. That's all I'm going to say. It's a bit trial and error. Start with it being off. Increase it bit by bit until you're happy with how the spray pattern goes. But Try it on full flow and you'll see what I mean. There's a lot of air going through. So I'm not on full flow. I'm not on full flow with the paint flow either. We're all a flow. There'll be a joke in there somewhere, but I'm not gonna do it. And I'm gonna go around all the edges, sides, and then I'm gonna finish off on the front. Now the front won't look covered all in one go because I've turned it down because I don't want loads of paint on this first coat. Now this stuff dries really quickly, so within half an hour, because we're spraying it, I'll be able to get a second coat on. I can then just increase that paint flow and I will get 
a nice coating over that. I know I will. I'm a professional. There's a joke in there as well, isn't there? Right. As I've got your attention, I'm just going to say thanks to all those that are giving me super thanks. You see that button below me there. They are people that are supporting the channel by um, giving me a little bit of money towards super thanks. Pressing that button and giving me the money through super thanks, I should say. So thank you very much. You know who you are. I don't want to make you feel like I'm not going to pick anybody out. But no, thank you very much. Right, and on that note, I'm going to get the camera turned off, move the camera around. You'll see me spraying, and then I'll talk to you at the end. I have got my mask. Turn that noisy thing off. Now, can you see how patchy that looks? Now that's intentional, because I turned down that paint flow to get a coating on it, because I didn't want to put too much paint on. And the trouble with um, spraying, you know, if you've got too much paint going on, particularly if you're holding the gun, uh, if, can do it. if you've got the gun too close to the surface, it applies too much paint in one spot. And if you're not moving quick enough, then you can start getting your runs. I didn't want any runs on this because the paint's quite thin. It's not overly thin, it's quite thin. And it's gone on nicely. That will level out lovely. I know it will because that Bedek MSP sprays beautiful, beautiful. You remember that? What's that bloke did? Beautiful, beautiful. Was he on um, Desmond's? Can you remember Desmond's? That, where well, they're in the hairdressers. And they're all sitting there, all the old guys, all the old black guys talking, Desmond's, oh yeah, remember that, was that 80s or 90s? Beautiful. Cutting hair, I don't know whether they'd be able to cut mine very well. <laughs> Everybody struggles with my hair, by the by. So, I've gone across the top. If you saw me, I was trying to get the gun against the wall so it could spray down at the very back, down there as far as it possibly could. And then I brought it round onto the front. And again, because I turned down that paint, I wasn't getting too much over that surface. Because if I'd got too much paint flow and I was doubling up on the coating, you'd start getting runs. I haven't got that. I was doing a bit of triggering to get rid of any dust. You could probably see a little bit dropping out because it was as I was going along. But on the whole, I'm virtually covered in all the spots that I want to get covered. Now, if you've got a radiator that's a little bit awkward and you can't get your sprayer into certain areas, get a fitch, get a, a, a brush, just touch those areas in, in between coats. Not at the end, do it in between. Do your first coat first, see how it's looking. If there's areas you're struggling to get to, just touch in with a brush. Then finish with your spray, because those areas at least then get covered. So, on, the, on that note, I'm going to let that dry, give it half an hour. If it's dry enough to respray, I will do. I'm hoping I don't need to nib down, and I shouldn't think I do do, or will do. Um, but I think we're nearly good to go. I'm really pleased. Well, I've got 
three more to do. Jobs are good. What I will say is, when I've sanded these down and cleaned them down with the hot water and detergent, that fine sanding pad was really good. Anything too coarse would be putting too big a scratches onto that surface. And particularly when you're using water-based paints that's been thin slightly, you can sometimes see where, you've, well, well, where people have sanded down. So if you've got a fine abrasive pad, that scratch the surface to give it the key, because that's all you need. We're not looking at scraping, scratching the paint off. All we need to do is just give it a key. And we've done that. So I'm gonna wait for these to dry, give them another coat, and I'll come back at the end and show you what they're like. Can you hear me, mother? Can you hear me? I'm going in for the kill. Second coat. On these. Do you wanna see it? Yeah, go on then. I have to say, that stage five HVLP is worth its weight in gold. If anybody's on about getting a HVLP, don't skimp, don't buy cheap cheap. You know that one that I recommend for a cheap one. It's ideal if you're starting out and learning, but you know when you start getting onto proper, let's charge money for stuff, quality remembered long after price has been forgotten. Right. I'm just going to open the window, there's a little bit of dust in the air, I shouldn't have took my mask off as soon as that. But, do you know what, that's gone on lovely. I just altered, don't really notice, just altered the paint flow. So there's a little bit more paint going on, and that has covered for the two coats. You saw when I did the final oh, lap, shall I say, final lap on the, on the face, I did go vertical, and then just the last waft over horizontal just to catch anything when you're spraying hvlp you're probably only spraying i don't know six seven eight inches not as much as that away from the surface too far it'll go everywhere too close you'll over overload your paint so just gauge it for what you feel comfortable with but i probably you probably didn't measure it. it's probably about six inches you know what six inches is and um that is beautiful i've gone over it the best i can where you've got, I'll just get rid of my legs on my tripod, hold on. Bear with me, bear with me. Right, I'll show you now. I've just sorted my tripod out. Oh, I look quite brown in this. Right, what I've done, let's make sure this thing's gonna move. I've gone in as far as I can with the sprayer on the corrugation of the back radiator. Now, there is certain areas lower down. If you look close, you're gonna see it's not fully covered because I can't get the sprayer in any further. Now if you wanted to be really anal you could get a rad roller and go even lower but I've done what I wanted to do just change the colour of these radiators and I'm impressed. I've gone under the underneath the bottom edge as far as I can. The beauty of that remote pot I could do that any direction and I'm just looking it's drying off it dries off that quick it's brilliant You've got that little bit of a pimple of a spray finish that is settling out because you need to get your paint wet enough for a wet edge that flows out. Um, and if you look and just look down the sides, and then we've got the paper there. I'm happy, with, I'm really happy with how that's covered. Now, actually, that was my last radiator. I'd done all the others, so I'll just quickly show you what that's like. I've got one there really nice got one i'll show you the whole i've got my bathroom bathroom's here just needs fitting don't start me on that radiator there that's really nice again gone in as far as i possibly can and my final one is in the bedroom and i'll just show you that there all two coated these are all drying off nicely 
because I made sure that that final coat on that radiator was my last one with you. So um, I'm going to say over and out at the moment. I'll come back after they've dried to show you what they like off one with all the paper around and then we'll say thank you very much. See you in a bit. Right, bit of a roundup. I've now taken off all the tapes of these radiators. See that one there? I've got the main one there I've been showing you. They're drying lovely. That satin finish of that bed deck, it's called soft. Can you see it? Soft satin, anthracite. It's a lovely finish. It's got a lovely sheen to it. It's hard wearing. It says on the tin, goes over radiators. That's why we're using it. But I'm quite impressed. Me only, me only bit of a downside is when my paper moved underneath some of the radiators, I've got a little bit of back over spray across my skirting boards. Not a big thing. In here is Scuff X. You'll have seen a video on that. I've just got a little bit of. It's a, literally a waft it's a shadowing so i've got a bit of shadowing i've got to just i don't think you can see it on there just underneath that radiator there i'll just pour a brush full across it it's not a, not a big thing as a professional i can do that um so i'm just going to finish up now i'm really pleased i can't see anywhere that i've missed that's major problem to me just those little bit of edges down at the back that I can't can't get to. But on the whole, I've now done four radiators, five if you count the one in the bathroom that's gonna be changed. I've actually painted them. So if you're thinking, do you wanna change the color of your radiators? Don't don't wanna be spending a fortune, do you? Buying a new radiator. These look, these look like new rads. I'm quite impressed. But we're just rounding up now quickly because I bet we've been about half an hour on this. I always say 20 minutes, but we're off now, particularly when it's really interesting. We like interesting videos. Um, cleaning up of this, it's water-based. Cleaning up of the remote pot is dead easy. I'm gonna tell you how to do it. I'm not gonna show you, I'm gonna tell you. Release the pressure in the air pot by that air valve so you can take the lid off. You'll know that. If you've got one of these, you'll know that. Now, if you haven't got one, this is why. <laughs> That's why you're listening to me. Tip out all the paint, wipe it out the best you can with your brush, get as much out as you can. And then what I do, I fill that up with water, halfway full with water, and I shake it about just to agitate any paint that might be still just on the top of the lid and on the sides. And then what I'll do, I will flush, I'll turn the machine on and I will flush that water through the gun, through the pipes, regulating how much paint goes in and out, regulating the fan just to alter it slightly. I keep doing that and I will probably do that three times and that pot will be clean. The pipe, the paint pipe will be clean. Once I know there's clean water coming out of the pot, through the pipe, through the gun, then all I do is turn it all off, strip down the gun, clean the needle if it needs a bit of wiping, re-oil the needle for next time and I'll just use, I don't think you can see, I'll just smear a bit of Vaseline over it, reassemble it, make sure the air cap's clean, put it all back together and you know what, I'll probably have done that in 10 to 15 minutes, it's not a big thing to do. If I've got the pot underneath, it's even quicker because you've got a smaller amount of paint to clear out the pipe, you haven't got that to do. So. On that note, it is dead easy to do HVLP cleaning out. So let me crack on. You might see some videos just coming there. Thanks for listening to me. Like, subscribe, share, all the usual. If you do fancy sending me some super thanks, I'll give you a big kiss now. Mm.